Hi everyone, my name is Ian and welcome to CBC Dad, where we talk about all things related to baby gear, parenting, and family life. And for today's video, I want to talk about strollers. Um, when I first found out that my wife was pregnant and we were expecting, uh, strollers was the first thing I wanted, uh, I thought that we needed to get. Um, maybe it's because they're kind of iconic in terms of whenever you see a person pushing a stroller down the street or have, to have a stroller, you automatically assume that they're a parent. Um, so that's kind of why I thought uh, we had to go get a stroller right away. Um, the funny thing is that later on I realized that strollers aren't necessarily the most critical thing that you need um, when having a baby. Um, but anyways, for today's video, I want to talk about the different factors or different things uh, my wife and I considered when we went about purchasing a stroller. When I first started doing my research to look at what kind of stroller we should buy, I quickly found out that there was a huge range in terms of price point and a variety of different brands out there with a bunch of features that may or may not have been important to us. So initially the overall process was quite overwhelming because there's such a huge selection. So to kind of simplify this, um, we kind of looked at what our needs were um, and what, kind of, what our lifestyle was. Um, and we kind of broke it down to different characteristics um, that I think all parents or all soon to be parents can use. Uh, when looking at purchasing a shoulder. And these four categories are car seat slash travel system, travel system, the, um, the size of your shoulder, your budget of course, as well as design or style. That's kind of like a bonus kind of category. So why am I talking about car seats when we're on the topic of shoulders? The reasoning is because it's really important to have them work hand in hand and be compatible with each other create your whole travel system, they like to call it. Um, the reason this is important is imagine if you've only had three or four hours of sleep and your baby um, is sleeping suddenly on, in the car um, on your way to the, 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 your doctor's appointment. Well, once you get out of the car, you don't want to wake up your sleeping baby to get a crying baby. Sleeping babies are always better than crying babies, right? So. Yeah. So it'd be really great if you could just put that whole car seat and just stick it into the stroller and leave your baby sleeping. That's a win. Um, if you have to unbuckle them and fuss around and put them into the stroller, then you might wake them up and get a really horrible crying baby. I mean, all babies are great. They're not, none of them are horrible, but when they're crying, it's kind of not that great. Especially if you've only had a few hours of sleep. So if you already have a car seat in mind that you want to use, that would eliminate, eliminate like half the brands of shoulders that you would consider. Um, obviously the simplest way would be to just purchase the same brand of shoulder and car seat, but you may not want to do that because there's a certain car seat that you really like um, from one brand. Um, and maybe they don't make shoulders or maybe it's just from a different brand of the shoulder that you do like. Um, but that's something you would want to consider. I can't kind of compare the car seat and shoulder world to the airlines world back way back when, when we used to take flights. Um, you have One World and Star Alliance. So you could, if you earn points in uh, a One World airline, you can use them on any of the airlines in One World. Um, that's similar to car seats and shoulders. There are basically two major types of latches. One is the upper, upper baby style latch. Um, I forget what other brands. Um, also use that style of latch, but there's also the Maxi Cozy Nuna Cybex style of latch. Um, and this is mainly for reference. You should really check um, what kind of shoulders work with what kind, what kind of car seats. But um, if you go to your local baby store, they, um, uh, most of them are happy, if they want your business, are happy to explain all this um, and to go over, okay, you can tell them, oh, I want this car seat. Like what kind of shoulders does it work for? or I want this shoulder, what kind of car seats does it work for? Um, I could go about doing it that way. Now for us, the car seat was actually less important. Um, obviously a car seat is really important for us in terms of keeping our baby safe, but we didn't really have a preference in terms of which car seat we wanted. Um, obviously they're all tested by the government, um, by the these people. Um, so no matter which car seat we chose, we felt like it would help uh, keep our baby safe. Oh, and the last thing before we move on from car seats is that if you aren't getting car seat, like you, if you don't drive, you live in the city, um, one thing you'll need to consider is that your, um, your shoulder is suitable for a newborn because newborns need to be laid flat 
um, they need a really flat surface. They can't, uh, they don't have the support to sit kind of upright. So, and there are some shoulders that are okay for newborns and some shoulders that are not okay for newborns. Um, and some, uh, some more expensive shoulders will come with a bassinet or maybe you can purchase a bassinet separately. Um, that will be okay for a newborn, but that's something you have to consider if you're not going to use a car seat. So the next feature that I wanted to talk about is shoulder size or shoulder type. I feel like this is actually the most important uh, feature that you need to consider um, when purchasing a shoulder. And the reasoning because, is because you don't want to buy a shoulder that's not right for your lifestyle. And I feel like it's even more important, more important than budget because no matter what your price range, uh, what your budget is, you can find a variety of different styles or sizes of shoulders that would fit your lifestyle. Um, so that's why I think shoulder size is actually really, really important. All shoulders can basically be broken down into three different classes, small, medium, and large. And kind of just like cars, there are some that kind of toe the line between small and medium and medium and large. Small shoulders are more compact and more lightweight. Uh, some of them are so compact that when you fold them, you can actually fit them into overhead compartments. Um, so they might be a good travel shoulder if you're looking for a shoulder that just that you can just travel with, you know, back when we actually flew. Um, depending on the city you live in, uh, you might want a more sh a compact or a small shoulder because uh, there's just a lot of people in the streets or the sidewalk sidewalks are more narrow, um, like in Asian or European countries. Uh, you don't want a really bulky shoulder that like everybody has to walk around or people will bump into your shoulder. Um, the cons of a small shoulder are they have smaller wheels, so uh, your baby will feel the bumps in the road more. So if you live a very outdoorsy kind of lifestyle, um, or if you're walking in snow, gravel, sand, or what have you a lot, uh, then this may not be the best shoulder for you. Smaller shoulders also have less customizability and flexibility. Most of them you can't fit like a bassinet or there are certain, certain car seats that won't work in a smaller shoulder. Um, and that's just something you have to be aware of, but it might be really good if you're living in a city or a smaller condo, um, just so that it's easier to store your shoulder, um, or if you have a sm smaller or more compact car. Next, we move on to the medium class size of shoulder. Um, obviously, they're the in-between a small and large shoulder. They're a bit more bulky, but they're not as large or as big as the really full-size shoulders. Um, and you should usually tell them between they have a two like they have two larger wheels in the back and maybe a smaller wheel in the front. And some of them will have like just four large wheels. Um, it just depends. Um, and usually these have the full customizability of like a large shoulder. Um, you can usually put um, what you call a kickboard, which is um, what, uh, what you can use if you have like a toddler and, and a baby. So the kid, uh, the toddler can be in the back of the stroller um, on a kickboard kind of thing um, while the baby is in the actual seat of the stroller. Um, they're obviously, because they have larger wheels, they're more, um, they're more friendly to, or they're more adaptive to um, rougher terrain or unpaved terrain. Um, so that's that's a benefit. Um, and they're just like a really good in between between a small size or and if you don't need large size. Um, it's a, what a lot of people like to purchase or like to start with. And lastly, we have the large or full size class of stroller. And the biggest benefit to these strollers is that they can um, often convert to a two baby or a dual stroller. Um, so it's really good if you're having twins or if you are going to have a second baby very quickly, then you can fit both um, both kids into the same shoulder. Um, and these shoulders will obviously provide the most comfort um, to your baby no matter what terrain uh, you're going to be um, you're going to be walking or strolling in. Uh, that's really bad. Um, and most of the large size shoulders also come with a lot of perks or a lot of um, add-ons. Um, with the shoulder, a lot of them you can just purchase separately and it'll just work with a larger shoulder. Um, but a, a lot of them also come with like a bassinet or something like that, um, depending on the price. It's, they're, they're not for free, that's for sure. Now, with these three classes, uh, there'll be a number of factors uh, based on your lifestyle that you'll want to consider before deciding which class of shoulder you'll want to buy. 
Um, and I mentioned, I kind of mentioned a few of these already, but like what the type of roads that you're going to be walking in. If you're going to be walking in a lot of unpaved uh, roads, like gravel or snow or what have you, then you'll probably want a shoulder with larger wheels. Another thing to consider is the city that you live in. Some cities are just not very friendly to, um, to a larger shoulder, either because of population or because there's a lot of stairs. You'll want a more compact shoulder so you can fit in the streets or if you need to carry your shoulder up the stairs a lot, um, that will be an issue. Uh, another thing is whether you're going to have a second child. Uh, you may want to have one that can expand to become a dual shoulder um, so that both can use it or at least have some sort of, so you can get some sort of kickboard attachment so that both kids can uh, utilize the shoulder. Um, and also if, you, if you're not going to be driving uh, and you take a lot of public transportation, uh, then that might be something you want to consider. Uh, you may not want to keep lugging your shoulder up the sky train or up, to, up the steps of a bus, um, or it just might fit better within a, within a, within a public transportation setting. And lastly, if if you're going to be traveling a lot, uh, then then you you probably just want a smaller shoulder, unless you want to get two shoulders, and that might be that might be what works for you as well. Now for us. Um, wheel size is actually not that important and the reasoning is because we're not super outdoorsy people we'll go camping like once a year and sometimes we'll go to parks and stuff but for the most part most of our walking and our exercise is done indoors and malls and things like that so wheel size is not very important to us uh, next is the city that we live in um, Vancouver is uh, very con conducive or very friendly to larger size shoulders just because a there's not that many people like compared compared to as a major city like maybe new york or tokyo or hong kong um the, the sidewalks aren't packed also the sidewalks are relatively wide so so it allows us to have any size of shoulder that we want <laughs> the third factor is um is whether we're going to have a second kid or not um, right now, we're not planning to have a second kid, um, and even if we do, we expect, unless there are anything, anything unplanned happens, uh, we expect that there will be a large enough gap where having a dual stroller, dual stroller is not as important uh, to us. The next factor is public transportation, and for me, public transportation is not as big of a deal because, for me, usually the only thing I'll take is um, the sky train because we live close by the train station so we'll take the train if it's nice outside or if we're just trying to go downtown or something instead of driving um, but for Yvonne she actually doesn't drive <clears throat> she can drive she just hates it she would much rather train or bus somewhere than to actually drive herself and we only have one car so um, having the shoulder be kind of more compact or at least lightweight is actually quite important to her um, so that's where we stand on that. Um, and then the last factor I would consider is traveling. So in terms of traveling, it also depends on where you travel or how you travel. If you're traveling by car a lot, if you're doing a lot of road trips, then um, depending on the city or the cities that you travel to, um, it will be, it might not matter what size of shoulder uh, you get. Um, but for us, uh, we actually travel to Asia, uh, cities, Asian cities a lot, and uh, maybe to European cities sometimes as well. Um, and going back to the last factor in terms of how welcoming a city is to large strollers, uh, this is really important because um, a lot like Hong Kong, where we go to a lot, and maybe Tokyo, these cities are very unfriendly to um, larger strollers or more heavy strollers. Um, I still remember that one time uh, when we were in Tokyo and it was snowing um, and we had to lug like three suitcases or four suitcases, like four large suitcases up all these stairs because they don't really have escalators much. Um, so there's a lot more stairs that you have to lug around. Like imagine trying to lug a stroller and four suitcases would be just like the death of me, um, especially in the snow and the cold or what have you. Um, so actually getting a shoulder that's lightweight is actually really important to us. Now some people just decide to get a second shoulder um, and that might work for you but 
uh, we decided against that just because it doesn't work for our lifestyle. Um, we didn't want to get a second shoulder that we might only use once or twice per year. Um, and then we'd have to store it somewhere because we live in a smaller condo. So it just didn't really make sense for like what we were going to do with it. Um, and because we had a set budget, we kind of didn't want to diminish the quality of your everyday driver or the one that we're going to use all the time just so that we can budget in for a second travel uh, shoulder just that we're going to use for traveling. So what we ended up doing is uh, we ended up choosing a smaller class of shoulder. Um, even though I wanted a medium size shoulder or like it's better comfort or it's more flexibility or adaptability to different terrain. Um, because we really did want a more compact, um, especially Yvonne really wanted a more compact and more lightweight shoulder. Um, that's what, that's the size that our class that we ended up getting. Next, let's talk about budget. So obviously, uh, everybody's financial situation is different. Um, and depending, and it's not only based on what you can buy, it's based on what you want to buy. Some people don't want to spend a large amount of money for something you'll only use for maybe two or three years. Uh, maybe even less if your baby really hates sitting in a stroller. So I'll just go over the different price ranges. I kind of just combine them into three, um, categorize them into three different price ranges. Um, and then I'll just talk about some of the characteristics and maybe some of the brands that you'll find um, in these price ranges. And obviously, uh, based on the size of the, of the stroller, um, a certain brand will have a um, will have maybe a smaller smaller uh, shoulder in a lower category, and their their bigger shoulders are like in a more expensive category. It just depends on what they decide to do. Um, and oh, by the way, these prices are all in Canadian, um, so just to let you know. Um, and our first price range is the under three hundred dollar category. Um, the, you know, this category is where you'll find brands like um, Ebb and Flow, Graco, Mountain Buggy, and some other ones. Um, in terms of where you can buy these, uh, I feel like a lot of them are available at like Toys R Us or Walmart um, and probably Target in the States. Um, what you'll find a lot with these uh, types of shoulders is that a lot of them are actually really lightweight. Um, and a lot of them actually come with a lot of extras that you won't find in the more premium or more expensive shoulders, uh, price range of shoulders. Um, and I think it's actually similar to cars. Like you'll, uh, when you buy a more luxurious car, you'll have to pay for almost everything, every option that you want to get. But with a more, um, with a more economical car or a lower price car, a lot of these will come in packages and the op pricing of these options will be cheaper or they'll just be standard. Um, and that's what you find in these um, more budget uh, type shoulders. They're, they're actually really good value because they come with a lot of extras that you would have to buy uh, for a more expensive shoulder. The next price range is the 300 to $800 price range. Um, and there's like a mis mismatch, mix, mix, mishmash of uh, shoulder brands that you'll find here. Um, you'll find the higher end shoulders of, or the larger shoulders of the more economy brands, um, some um, mid-tier brands, as well as the um, smaller shoulders of the more expensive brands. Um, so brands, so mid-tier brands uh, you, you'll find here are like uh, Silver Cross. Um, and mid-tier actually mean in terms of pricing, um, I believe a lot of the quality like Silver Cross, for example, is really high. Like they've done shoulders for many, many years. Um, so things like Silver Cross, Baby Zen, um, some of the Cybex stuff uh, is in this price range as well. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, and what you'll often find in this category is that um, they have a more premium quality uh, to what they do and the in terms of the quality of materials and as well as the quality of the design so you'll find that maybe the fold is a lot smoother or um, when when you uh, when you fold the shoulder it's just more compact um, things are maybe more well put together or maybe they have better warranties as well um, and and there might be more customization in terms of what these shoulders can do so lastly we have the h and dollar and above category um, and these are the more premium brands or the more IGO brands that you'll see in terms of things like Nuna, Appa Baby, Bugaboo, uh, some of the Stokey stuff, some of the um, 
uh, Cybex stuff is in, in here as well. Um, and what you'll notice is that like the finish is usually already there in the more uh, mid-tier brands. Um, but what you'll have in the more ex the, the really premium brands is that like uh, maybe higher quality of materials, um, such as like leather wrapped handlebars or things like um, four wheel suspension so that there's more comfort on um, like rougher terrain. Also things like the folding design, uh, it might be a more one handed fold. Like it might be already really smooth on the on the mid tier uh, shoulders, but it might be, they might make it so that you only need one hand when you're trying to open up the shoulder um, or when you're trying to uh, close the shoulder, it only requires one hand. And that's not to say that like a lot of these options or features aren't available on the mid tier, uh, but they're just more, uh, um, just more common. Um, and it's it's also a lot about design because um, similar to let's say handbags or what have you, or a lot of products, the, the nicer the look or design of a, of a shoulder, um, the more people are willing to pay. Um, so design is also a huge um, factor in, or the look of the shoulder is also a huge factor in these uh, premium styles of, uh, of shoulders. Like there'll be more more colors um, or more accessories or options uh, that you can choose from in this category. Now, before I move on to uh, design and the last criteria, design and style, I would say that if you are looking for a more premium shoulder and it's outside of your budget, you can either a don't get it um, because, like I said, your kid may not even want to sit in the shoulder, um, so it might just be a waste of money. Or b, what you can do is maybe look for a second hand or used shoulder. Uh, maybe on Craigslist or Facebook Market. I know at least here in Vancouver, there are a bunch of people. Um, there are a lot, or I've seen a lot of postings at least for a lot of user second hand shoulders. Um, and that might be one way you want to go. And actually there's a third way is that um, there are actually some lesser well-known brands of shoulders that, still, uh, that are still really high quality and really premium. Um, I'm not sort of sponsored by them, so I just mentioned them is um, is called uh, Mockingbird. Um, th these shoulders, unfortunately, they're not available in Canada. Um, last I last I checked, but they're like really very Papa Baby ish. Um, but they're a really high quality uh, type of shoulder, um, but for like half the price. Um, they're only sold in the states right now, I believe. Um, and they sell direct to customers, so you can't actually get them in like your standard baby store. But from all the reviews I've seen and everything I've heard, they're like a really good option. So for us, we decided to set a budget at a thousand dollars Canadian. Um, like I said, it really just depends on your own personal financial situation and your budget, like how much you want to spend. Um, that's just the number that we decided on um, after looking at the budget for anything else we needed to buy. And based on if we did decide to stick with a smaller stroller, we could basically choose whatever shoulder that we wanted to buy. Um, because all the compact or small shoulders are under a thousand. The last feature or category I want to talk about is design. Um, so I won't really go too much in detail about it because design is very subjective. A, in terms of um, what types of looks or styles or colors that you may like but it's also very subjective in terms of how important it is to you. For us, it's uh, it's pretty important. So like we were probably willing to uh, sacrifice some budget and maybe even some like features of a shoulder um, for a better looking shoulder, dep depending on, uh, on what it was. But for you, it might just be, okay, uh, th you'll look at all the criteria I mentioned earlier in terms of the size, in terms of the um, in terms of budget, um, in terms of the, uh, the function. And then you'll just decide, okay, um, based on all these factors, I'll just choose the prettiest looking one. And it just might be the last thing you, the, the last deciding criteria for you. Um, so I just want to mention that. So once again, what we want to do was a smaller, more compact shoulder, a shoulder that's under a thousand dollars. We didn't really care about the car seat or um, which brand of car seat. And um, we want something that looked good. Um, and based on that, we um, we evaluated uh, different brands. Um, because my budget was $1,000, I only really focused or took a deeper look into the more premium brands of shoulders. Um, and I'll go over a few of them in terms of what I think about each. 
One is of course Alpha Baby. I think it's like the most popular brand here in Vancouver. Uh, you see a lot of them um, around. I think the Cruise is their smaller. Is there more? It's more like a mid-size shoulder. Um, but you see it on Craigslist a lot because people, a lot of people in Vancouver have it. Um, so a lot of people are also selling it. The next brand I want to mention is Baby Zen. Baby Zen, uh, I believe the yo-yo is a very popular uh, shoulder, especially in Asia. And I think they're like the king of just, um, of travel strollers. Um, they have a really cool fold where you kind of just throw it out and it kind of like unfolds itself. Um, and they also have quite a bit of different colors. So that's really cool. So the next is Bugaboo. Bugaboo actually has a very wide range of shoulders, like from, I believe they call it the Ant, uh, which is a really compact shoulder or the bee. I, I remember which one to like, I believe it's called the donkey where it's like a dual shoulder. And so, uh, I really like their designs. It's very minimalistic. Um, and they have a very, um, they have a really, I think I mentioned they have a really nice push to them. Um, and I think I would have gotten them if we were looking for a mid-size shoulder because I really like the Fox um, or the Lynx. I think they're the same. Um, but, uh, but we ended up getting something else because I didn't really like the B or the Ant. It just looked too... I don't know, dink, not, not dinky, that's a really bad word to describe it, but we just didn't really like the look of their smaller or more compact shoulders. So I'll go into the final three th uh, actual shoulders that we narrowed it down to. The first um, is the Nuna Triv. The Nuna Triv is a really awesome shoulder. I think it was, functionally, it was our favorite, our favorite one because what it can do is it folds up super compact um, and even with the car seat adapter, um, the car seat adapter folds with the, with the shoulder itself. Um, so overall, it's just a really, really clean design and the shoulder, um, and because it was so compact and it looked really lightweight and easy to carry, um, that's why it was like on the, like the very top of our list, um, in terms of what we wanted to, want to get. The second shoulder that we considered is the Cybex Mios. Cybex is kind of weird in terms of that they have two different lines, the gold line and the platinum line. And the platinum lines are more, um, is a more premium line. And the Mios is part of that line. Why we like the Mios comes down to two words, rules gold. <laughs> um, it has rules gold like bars instead of what you would normally see like black bars. Um, so aesthetically, it was like a really just pretty design to us. Um, and there were like a lot of pretty cool color options. It still had like the functionality in terms of uh, a premium shoulder. Like it had the four wheel suspension. It had like premium materials. Um, it had a really compact and small fold. Um, so that's why we really liked uh, the Cybex Mios as well. The last shoulder that we considered is the Guzzi and Gus Hopscotch. This is also a very new shoulder that um, I think they just started making a few years ago. Um, Guzzi and Gus is actually a, a a local company in Vancouver. So that's one reason why um, I was really interested in, in the in the hopscotch. It's kind of larger than most smaller shoulders, but it's also very lightweight. So it's actually very similar in terms of weight, in terms of the um, the, the last, the, the Cebex Mios, as well as the Nuna Trip. Uh, I think the Nuna Trip might be a little lighter. I forget. So those are the top three shoulders that we narrowed it down to. Um, which one did you guys think we ended up with? Uh, leave a comment down below. Um, but in the end, what we decided to get is the Cybex Mios. Uh, yes, that's right. We 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 based our our purchasing uh, decision of a shoulder, like largely based on the look of the shoulder. Um, I think function uh, functionally uh, functionally. Wise, uh, it's pretty good. Like it's, it's really solid in terms of its overall function and design. Um, and I think, obviously, I think the Nuna Trib has a more creative uh, and a better quality in terms of like the actual function of the shoulder itself. Um, but what really got us was that the design of the Nuna Trib was really uninspiring for us. Like it just looked like this little dark gray thing that we probably weren't look very looking forward to pushing around with our get-in. 
So that's why we actually ended up not getting the Nuna trip. If it was based on function alone, uh, we probably would have gotten that one. Um, and I think the um, the Gezi and Guess, why we didn't end up getting the Hopscotch is that um, you know, I still thought it was a, a slightly larger than what we needed, um, especially for putting it into our car. And the issue with it is that, once again, based on design, Yvonne hated the wheels on the hopscotch. Like, I think they look pretty cool and pretty unique, but she just really didn't like them. Um, so that's kind of why we went away from that too. So I guess this video basically tells you, really, there are lots of like uh, uh, features on functions you can decide on, but depending on what's important to you, it may just like, it may just, you may just forget about everything else. And for us, design like basically overruled everything else except for the class of shoulder, which is why I mentioned earlier, the class or size of shoulder, I feel like it's a really important thing, uh, a really important factor in what you're going to buy. So that's it for today's video. I don't know if it's super long, it felt like it was really long, but I hope you like it. Um, like, comment, share with uh, other uh, soon-to-be parents. Uh, hopefully this will help you or help your friends in terms of making a purchasing decision, purchase decision uh, for a shoulder. Um, until next time, um, this is Ian from CBC Dad. Bye.